All right, this next video is on Dr. Christmas and his flex wing airplane, uh, the Christmas bullet. I didn't know anything about this story, uh, news to me, and my brother recommended it to me after watching my video, Freaks That Flew. So pretty cool that he recommended uh, another airplane, and I know you have commented on some other airplanes too that I should research, so I'm definitely gonna work on that, and that'll be some upcoming videos. But anyway, Dr. Christmas, flex wing airplane, the Christmas bullet, and in this video, I'm going to do something a little different. I didn't do any AI images at all, so it's all um, factual images. And uh, I worked on the narrating <clears throat> a little bit. Um, when I speak, sometimes I have a monotone voice, and uh, trying to trying to improve on that. So uh, thanks for all your input. Really appreciate all the comments. And uh, here's the newest result of uh, trying to get a better video out. So anyway, um, thanks again, and enjoy. Imagine a time when aviation was in its infancy, a thrilling, uncharted frontier where dreamers, inventors, and daredevils sought to conquer the skies. The early 20th century was an age of innovation and ambition, where the line between brilliance and recklessness was often blurred. Among these pioneers was Dr. William Whitney Christmas, a man whose name invokes a tale not of triumph, but of tragedy. His infamous creation, The Christmas Bullet, was intended to revolutionize flight. Instead, it became a symbol of unchecked ambition, catastrophic design flaws, and the ultimate cost of human lives. In this story, we'll delve into the rise and fall of the Christmas bullet, what made it unique, why it failed, and what it teaches us about the dangers of prioritizing ambition over accountability. It's a journey into one of aviation history's most infamous chapters, filled with bold ideas, tragic outcomes, and enduring lessons. The Christmas Bullet, a cautionary tale of ambition and failure. The early 1900s marked the dawn of aviation, a time when humanity stood at the brink of achieving the impossible. Airplanes had captured imaginations worldwide, sparking a wave of innovation and experimentation. Amid this frenzy of invention, one man stood out not for his success, but for his extraordinary failures. Dr. William Whitney Christmas, a physician turned aviator, believed he could revolutionize flight. Instead, his most infamous creation, the Christmas Bullet, would go down in history as one of the worst aircraft ever built, a tale of unchecked ambition and catastrophic oversight. Dr. Christmas, visionary or charlatan? Dr. William Whitney Christmas was a complex figure, a medical doctor by training he abandoned his practice to pursue aviation, inspired by the Wright brothers' success. Christmas claimed to have built and flown his first plane as early as 1908, but no evidence exists to support his assertion. What is certain, however, is his flair for self-promotion. He founded several aviation companies, including the Christmas Aeroplane Company and later the Cantilever Aero Company, and he made bold claims about his contributions to the field. Among his many boasts, he claimed to have invented the aileron, a critical innovation for aircraft control, a claim wildly disputed by his contemporaries. Christmas's defining project, the Christmas Bullet, emerged during this period of unbridled ambition. Co-designed with Vincent Bernelli, a skilled aircraft engineer, the Bullet was envisioned as a revolutionary single-seat biplane with a unique cantilever wing design. While Bernelli contributed to the fuselage design, he refused to involve himself with the wings, foreseeing the dangers of their construction. The Fatal Flaws of the Christmas Bullet The Christmas Bullet's defining feature was also its greatest flaw, the wings. Christmas believed that traditional struts and braces were unnecessary and insisted on flexible, unbraced wings that would mimic the flapping motion of a bird. This radical departure from conventional engineering ignored the fundamental physics of flight. Aircraft wings endure immense stress during operation, and structural support is critical to prevent catastrophic failure. By eliminating these supports, Christmas ensured that the bullet was inherently unstable. Constructed with subpar materials, the bullet's wings were designed to flex freely, a concept that alarmed many engineers, including Bernelli. Despite these concerns, Christmas pushed ahead dismissing critics and promising investors a revolutionary breakthrough in aviation technology. The veneer-clad fuselage, another touted innovation, was claimed to reduce drag, 
though this design was already common in German aircraft during World War I. Tragedy Strikes, the first flight. In January 1919, the first Christmas bullet was ready for its maiden flight. The U.S. Army had provided a prototype Liberty engine, and Cuthbert Mills, an experienced pilot, was tasked with testing the aircraft. Mills' mother, tragically, was present to witness the historic event. The flight began smoothly, but within moments, disaster struck. The flexible wings detached from the fuselage under the stress of takeoff. With no chance to recover, the bullet plummeted to the ground, killing Mills instantly. The crash destroyed the Liberty engine, a significant loss given its value and scarcity in the post-war period. Rather than acknowledge the design's flaws, Christmas attempted to cover up the crash. He concealed the engine's destruction from the Army and published false claims in aviation magazines, boasting that the bullet had achieved speeds of 197 miles an hour and completed multiple successful test flights. These fabrications, while brazen, helped him secure funding for a second prototype. The Second Bullet, a Repeat Disaster Incredibly, despite the glaring issues with the first bullet, Christmas managed to build a second prototype. This time, the plane was fitted with a Hall Scott L6 engine and was showcased at Madison Square Garden as the first strutless airplane. The audacity of presenting an aircraft with a fatal design flaw as a groundbreaking innovation exemplified Christmas's talent for manipulation and showmanship. In May 1919, the second bullet took to the skies, piloted by Lieutenant Allington Joyce Jolly. The results were tragically predictable. As with the first flight, the wings failed under stress, leading to another fatal crash. Jolly's death marked the end of the Christmas bullet project, but the damage, both physical and reputational, was done. A Legacy of Deception Even in the face of such catastrophic failures, Dr. Christmas refused to accept responsibility. Instead, he doubled down on his claims, insisting that the bullet was a successful design that both pilots had survived their respective crashes. His willingness to distort reality extended beyond the bullet. He claimed to have sold his flexible wing design to the U.S. Army for $100,000, a sum for which no evidence exists. He also boasted of receiving a $1 million offer from Germany to rebuild their air force after World War I, an absurd claim given the political and economic realities of the time. Despite the obvious flaws in his designs and tragic loss of life, Christmas faced no legal repercussions. His charisma and ability to weave captivating narratives allowed him to continue securing investment and public interest, though his credibility within the aviation community was irreparably damaged. The Broader Implications The story of the Christmas bullet is not merely a historical curiosity. It serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the importance of rigorous engineering practices. The failures of the bullet highlight the need for accountability in innovation, particularly when human lives are at stake. Dr. Christmas's story underscores the perils of prioritizing hype and ambition over safety and expertise. The U.S. Army's involvement with the project also raises questions about oversight and institutional responsibility. How could such a fundamentally flawed design receive military support, and why were engineers' warnings ignored? The lack of consequences for Christmas points to systemic issues in early aviation, where the allure of technological breakthroughs often overshadowed critical scrutiny. A tale that resonates today. Though Dr. Christmas died in 1960, his story remains relevant. In today's world, where technological innovation occurs at breakneck speed, the lessons of the Christmas bullet resonate deeply. Whether in aviation, artificial intelligence, or biotechnology, the balance between progress and responsibility is as critical now as it was a century ago. The Christmas bullet reminds us to approach bold claims with skepticism, to demand evidence, and to prioritize safety and ethics in the pursuit of progress. Behind every technological disaster are stories of loss and suffering, as evidenced by the tragic deaths of Cuthbert Mills and Ellington Joyce Jolly. Their lives were sacrificed to a vision that defied logic and ignored the expertise of those who sought to prevent disaster. The Christmas bullet stands as a cautionary tale, a grim reminder that ambition without accountability 
can lead to catastrophe. It calls on us to question, to challenge, and to ensure that innovation serves humanity, not the other way around. Dr. Christmas's ill-fated creation may have failed to revolutionize aviation, but it succeeded in teaching a timeless lesson. Progress is only meaningful when tempered by responsibility. All right, so what'd you think of that video? Pretty cool, right? And again, I thank you for all the comments and point me in the right direction to make these videos better and more pleasing. So uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Again, uh, leave some more comments. Uh, what else would you like to see? What do you want me to work on? Different airplanes, pilots, uh, you name it. I'll, I'm open for any kind of ideas you have. So again, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.